this. Um, the story, the whole Jubril house is nonsense. It's evidently the dilution of the house. It was given by the information that and the lack of information for six months to take his meds. Mm. Okay. So you, when you don't have proper information management, rumor mongers will step in. Yes, it's a gap that must it's be a filled. Gap that has to be that will be filled. Natural abhorrence battle. Mm. Second, it's this is a clear testament of the disdain with which Buhari holds Nigerians in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Our president has not spoken to us since December 2015. He doesn't care what we think. He doesn't. You Again, by that you mean speaking directly to in Nigeria to yes. Nigerians, except for when he does addresses on national days, which, are, which, which is does. which is unavoidable. Okay, you understand. Okay. Those are those are very scripted. He just comes, fellow Nigerians, blah blah blah. Those are scripted. A genuine tete a tete with Nigerians has not happened in three years. I mean, but the moment he gets outside the country, he begins to sing like a canary. And it was in an outside um, uh, 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 Kiniko Kiniko that uh, that this that this the technical terms then. that this uh, this question was now answered. Mm -hmm. Now, the dangerous thing with this kind of behavior is that the foreign media, which have largely ignored this story, as he answered in Poland, they picked it up. Mm. And as of four and a half hours ago. The influential Fox News commentator, uh, conservative commentator in America, Ben Shapiro, mm -hmm. has picked up on it and was actually making jokes out of it. Now, Guess who watches Ben Shapiro? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Donald okay. Trump. Yeah. Now, the <laughs> third part of it, which for me is the oh. most important thing, because it's away from the Buhari Nambi Kano drama, is this. This thing, sh the fact that this story grew legs like this, and the kind of people who were propagating this story tells you how dangerously ignorant our society is. Okay, and that's I mean, what I wanted to address. I mean, I'm I'm really frightened about Nigeria's future because this shows that we don't do fact check. All the all somebody did was to take a picture of Buhari signing a document, mm. use Photoshop and flip it around, mm. make him look left-handed, and so many people people just ran with it. I mean, it's. I deliberately refrain from talking about this on social mm -hmm. media, but I am I am frightened. Oh, that because unquote, it's everywhere. A properly educated populace. No, a properly managed fake news, properly thought through fake news campaign can do a lot of damage in this oh, country right, right. because we'll just run with it, no questions asked. Thank Number. you very much for that, Chetan. Uh, really concerning um, uh, as to how quickly uh, stories like this uh, gain attention, but we'll move away from it. On to this one from the Premium Times. The EFCC have released a report on the controversial 13.7 billion Naira uh, Nigerian Ports Authority dredging contract. So essentially what had, uh, uh, the, the situation as it exists is that um, uh, there had been a, a petition um, by the Casual Advocacy Center alleging that the Nigerian Ports Authority had awarded uh, this dredging uh, contract to Dredging International Services. They say it was a convicted company, uh, the NPA in breach of proc procurement law. Uh, but today, the, the story unveils unravels in a different way. What are your thoughts on this story yeah, and well, the I mean, details of yeah, the unraveling? And the details. So there, there are three parts to it. There's the petition itself, there's NPA's reaction, and then there's EFCC's uh, position in it. So I'll get to the EFCC's um, own uh, last. But well, most of this, it's like you mentioned, it's centered around um, uh, the fact that the parent company of the um, of the company that's of that that the contract has been awarded to mm -hmm. um, was convicted in Switzerland and a number of other countries for crimes. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, very often you find um, entities in 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 Nigeria have partnerships or are subsidiaries of uh, you know another multinational, and that gives them leverage in winning business. And perhaps that's what's happened here. Okay. However, the parent company has been convicted of crimes, um, according to the petition, in many different uh, countries. But okay. I mean, um, it was proven. At least the story points out that they were convicted in Switzerland, uh, and to award um, to award a contract to a convicted company is um, against our procurement laws, um, so to say. However, the argument is that uh, being a subsidiary, they're not the same legal entity as the parent company. Yes, they're this not. This is that um, they don't have, uh, they don't share directors, there's no, no they're one. Separate, they're, they're separate, they're separate entities. They're separate entities. You know, however, they would have the same, you know, all owners, no doubt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm, well, yeah. It, it, not necessarily, because, I mean, you, your, a company is a company, right? You just have an agreement no, to so exist the, so, as a subsidiary so underneath, but legally you are completely so separate. So they're separate entities under yes. the law, yes. yes. But most likely, if not, in fact, it's not most likely, no doubt, they will have the same <laughs> owners, ultimately, okay. right? 
Um, so for that for that fact, um, I think you know um, the, the petition should have some merit. Now, however, this is MPA's reaction is obviously, and the other th uh, allegation is that there was no budget for this, right? There was no uh, budget, and for an expenditure this large, uh, it's a bit surprising that there would uh, there would be no budget for it, and they would um, award it in a year that there was you no budget. Surprised. It's surprising, yeah, but it's Nigeria. Mm. Now. Um, MPA's reaction is that, look, it followed um, all the uh, processes as enumerated in the Procurement Act 2004. And my position, it's, it's absolutely possible to follow everything laid out in the Procurement Act 2004 mm -hmm. and for the allegations to still have merit. Mm -hmm. What that would mean is perhaps that our Procurement uh, Act needs to be updated, mm -hmm. you know, to cater for, you know, new, um, new trends and keep it alive. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's um, absolutely right. And on the final part, on the EFCC, EFCC mm -hmm. obviously hinges its... Uh, position for dismissing the petition on the fact that they are legal entities. While it is correct in law, I mean they are. Uh, I mean they're not. They're not the Supreme Court to come down and no, they're give, not. But, but you know judgments. Well, but here is here is the situation, right? Um, you have got to what we do operate on is the basis of law. No we do operate on this basis of fact. Mm. Um, so fully, fully no doubt. Yeah. yeah. So my only position. So they're right. Yeah. Okay. My only position is that the wording and the language of their um, written uh, statements, their legal uh, position, I think was a bit too strong in saying that everything was um, right and well. Mm. Right. Mm. They should have been a bit more okay. According to the the procurement act, no wrongs have been done. However, mm. you know we will keep an eye on this, or yes. there should be. Yeah, that type of thing. Right? All right. Thank you very much for that. Up next, Lagos APC denies pulling down PDP campaign materials and the street fighting has begun. I don't know if other people saw it. I definitely had to swerve on Third Mainland Bridge to avoid campaign uh, posters that have been pulled down. Um, and of course, I have other questions about the, whether those particular types should be up in the, in the middle of the road, in, in the road medians anyways, as they could pose um, a hazard, as they did for a lot of motorists. Um, but what are your thoughts on this story, Gwala Please take us through it. Well, you know, I, I also saw these uh, campaign boards as well, too, but maybe not in the middle of the roads. I saw them just right on maybe the... Uh, Where do you drive to? I, I saw them on the third <laughs> mainland bridge okay. in the middle, uh, as usual, oh. anyway, as you would normally have the campaign boards or so. And, you know, it was very, very bold... And it was, you know, scary as well too. And and the caption on it as well too, which read freedom as well. Mm. So, you know, maybe that actually sent a lot of message to the APC uh party members as well too, and it scared them a little bit because when I when I questioned that that captioned as well, freedom from what exactly mm -hmm. are we actually referring to? So, you know, in the, in this article, he actually mentioned as well too that you know the the, the posters came up on Friday, mm -hmm. but I was uh, allegedly by Saturday morning, all of it had disappeared. It was all gone. Okay, listen, they had been pulled down and thrown onto the third mainland bridge, so we had a situation uh -huh. where people had almost driven over them, and cars were swerving uh -huh. to avoid wreckage on the bridge. Ah, so I, I see where you mean what you mean now by saying they was actually on the road on yes. on, on that Saturday. Yes. Yeah. Earlier on, it was actually just in the middle of the road. So when when we look at it, this is not the first time that we've had this incident happen as well. So this actually happened under the Amber Day campaign as well. Too that uh, he had all these banners destroyed and damaged, and you know there were uh, prints and color marks all over the faces as well. So this happened as well, and you would wonder who are the masterminds behind this when we're hearing that the APC. Um, spokesperson wonder. is actually saying that he's they, they're not ask, asking their people to get involved in this but it seems very very un, uh, funny as well too, that when you have anybody that is going against the party uh, APC, then you always have situations of this nature happening but, but, but here's a question exactly because you mentioned that right um, is it <clears throat> to phrase the question or what I'm considering is the reality that there are a lot of elements within these parties that cannot be controlled that operate almost as independent cells and perhaps they think they're doing a favor or a disservice it could be gangs as as Lagos. alleged there you go the guy what do you call the gangs, gangs of, Lagos. of Lagos interesting well, and, and that's concerning because um, citizens tend to get caught in the crossfire again I was alarmed at how many cars had to swerve and avoid accidents just because some people thought let's pull this out onto the roads are we as they say are we not doing ourselves it, it talks it, it says a lot about the control that the party also has on its um, party members as well. What sort of control do they have as well? Too? And what are the repercussions of this action? We're in a democracy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, you know, people can do and undo these things. This is not the first time that we'll be seeing such incidents. It's mm, been happening years. Very true. For so long as well too. And, you know, apart from this as well, we can classify this as violence. We've also seen this as well too.
was on an, yeah, we, we, well, we, we, we've seen this on an escalated front. While it's a problem here in Lagos and it's clearly much a, uh, clearly a culture, I must say that I have seen something very similar. I said in Cross River right now, mm. if you are not uh, uh, if you are not in support of Ben Ayade, you can't even get a billboard. Put up. I said that's how bad it is. Well, we'll keep an eye out. We expect uh, more bad behavior during this period. Well, you want to round up? I just wanted to round up. You know, so where does that put our freedom of expression then when you cannot really express the party that you're interested in and, you know, be free about it? There's freedom of expression in Nigeria. It's freedom of expression. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah, look at the let's, day let, let, let's just keep it moving on to the next one. Speaking of expression, um, the oil market has tend to express themselves quite vocally um, every end of the year, and it's back again. This is in from the Punch newspaper. This time the headline reads, oil market says are giving the federal government seven days to pay, wait for it, 800 billion naira subsidy debts. Um, this is the major oil marketers association speaking out, saying uh, that they, for several months, nothing has been done. Um, they've received assurances saying they'd pay off the outstanding debt, um, but that hasn't happened. So, Chesa, your thoughts? Um, so, again, three threats. That's with the freedom of expression thing. One thing that has been clearly proven in these countries, you have complete freedom of expression when you have somewhere to squeeze on. Mm -hmm. And the oil marketers have somewhere to squeeze on. So uh, the second thing, I need to reread Nigeria's con uh, constitution very well because it's beginning to look as if it's actually a constitutional uh, provision that the most first scarcity every December. <laughs> every December we get this kind of thing, and then just before everybody enter, uh, well, some of us enter roads to start going home for mm -hmm. Christmas. Okay. It becomes a problem. Mm -hmm. Anyway, away from all of that uh, joy. Look at the, the amount, 800 billion. 800 billion nowadays is uh, 1 point something billion dollars. Mm. When you consider that the 2017 budget performance report showed an expenditure of just 1.3% of GDP on CapEx, you begin to imagine what impact this cash would have had if it was spent as CapEx. Instead, we've been running up this debt, sustaining cheap petrol for an imaginary 50, uh, 56 million liter consumption. Uh, 56 million liters per day is what an NPC claims we currently consume. I mean, it's totally imaginary. At some points, we have to come to grips with the reality that this cheap petrol that we think we get is not cheap, really. It is not, and it is costing us a lot. Because somebody is lifting this well, somebody needs to get paid for it. Somebody is not getting paid. And then every year, they will hold us all by the nether regions. Mm -hmm. It's a problem. Thank you very much for that. Um, we will uh, just go over to your messages before we move on with more stories. Uh, all right, so this one from Freda says, wow, cannot believe with all that's going on in the country, Buhari clone stories first. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We just had to get that out of the way. <laughs> yes. And then my from Akoka sent this one. It says, now that Buhari has spoken out, I hope that this lays to bed the very unintelligent conspiracy theories. His media team, though, no words there. Again, mm. we have to get clarification from abroad or India abroad. Hope votes are coming in. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. And this one is up on Twitter from Deji Adeonju, who says, it is criminal for anyone to remove campaign boards of any party. I the only suffered. In prison now, it's a, um, this is, I yes, well, <laughs> Emeka Uncles, but that's his Twitter name. Anyway, it says I almost suffered an accident on Saturday as I had to make a sharp turn just to avoid running over the nails. Yes, mm -hmm. indeed. Now, seven months after the one billionaire uh, equipment fund was approved by the federal government for the military, the Nigerian army says they are yet to access that fund, uh, <laughs> according to the chief of army staff, uh, Lieutenant General Tuko Yusuf Buruta. He made this disclosure yesterday. Uh, Bolaha, what are your thoughts on this? Seeing that we still have, it's it's one of the major issues that the federal government should be, should be paying attention to and really expedite actions towards supporting the the fight against Boko Haram, and yet we still find this in the news. What are your thoughts? Oh, he says a, a, a lot about our priorities in this country as well. Where exactly our, does our priority lie? If, you know, seven months after mm. the promise of releasing the $1 billion to fight uh, the insurgency, and of course we are seeing on a regular basis, on a monthly basis, the killings of our, of our, of our military men, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of complaint that they're not being equipped enough as well to, to mm -hmm. fight this insurgency. Just a week ago as well, too, you were talking about Buritai also saying that, you know, the militias or the Boko Haram fighters were actually using drones and yes. also using also foreign subsidized equipment. Uh, equipment as well, too. And here we are as well, too, 
several months later the money is not being released well when you look at the situation of course it's a bit unfortunate and we're pleading to the government as well to, to release these funds but when we go back to the situation where is this money meant to be coming from mm. it's the way one billion dollars was uh, approved by the National Executive Council several months ago, yeah, it and it was meant to be coming from the excess crude account. Mm. Now, when I look at the excess crude account, how much do we really have available in the excess crude account as well? Mm. To, I think as, as as at last count, we had only about two point something billion dollars or so. Mm. Might have grown a, marginally, so we're talking definitely less than three billion dollars or so. And of course, there was a lot of kick against this as well too. That why should this money be released? A lot of people were screaming over it or so. Mm. But here we are several months later, money is still yet to be released. And of course, we know that the government is actually seeking for funds all over as well. To we're, we're, we're short of funds. Mm. But seeking for funds, is, is, does that um, take precedence over or does that override the need or the it, urgency it, to it, end it, the insurgency it, in Nigeria? It, it, it shouldn't. But, you know, this uh, what the uh, chief of army staff actually mentioned as well to the situation is with the bureaucratic bottlenecks that we normally encounter as well, too, the and the politicizing the as well, too. The money is the CBN. This <laughs> thing is, this uh, Boko Haram war is a money-making mm -hmm. venture. Mm -hmm. People are getting rich on top. Mm -hmm. That is why the thing is becoming a war without end. Mm -hmm. Shortly after the money was approved, the army on their Twitter account put pictures of supplies that were being delivered. Yes, so, they say now that the so money, has not, been money has not been released. Come on, see, if you follow the communication since they have been um, the, uh, since the, the, the money was approved and all, all of that, at many points in time they have implied that they have gotten new equipment and all of that. Suddenly they've not because they, we, we are, they should at least give us credit. Stop mm. telling us that we're imbeciles. Ah. And from Punch Newspaper, thank you, gentlemen. Thank you, Bolaho and Jata. Uh, from Punch Newspaper, we'll go to this next story. Streamline the functions of the DPRO. Stakeholders tell federal government, as uh, that's the Department of Petroleum Resources. They said the the body that came together to say this, uh, they formed civil society groups and organizations, uh, various organizational um, government agencies, really, speaking about uh, the assessment of the environmental framework in our oil and gas sector. They said that the DPRO is saddled with multiple responsibilities that they need not be taking on. Uh, they cannot act as uh, a regulator and uh, the agency responsible for issuing licenses at the same time. Uh, they said today that if the DPRO takes on both responsibilities, it goes against, it does not align with international best practices. What are your thoughts on this? Yeah, that's, yeah, uh, that, and that's the argument. And, and, and of course, it, it, goes, it comes with a lot of merit. So, look, again, we have... Um, another um, agent, not agency, another, you know, think tank, so to say, mm -hmm. um, for, for lack of a better word, have come together, the industry stakeholders, and they said, look, you know, you know, we're not running in the best manner as we, that we can. We're not running as efficiently as we as we can. Mm. And they put out their thoughts. But you see, that's not what we're lacking. It's not in ideas. It's not in what to do. Um, I mean, think of think of the PIB or is it the PIGB? You know? PIGB. Mm. Yeah, look at look at it. It's it's, it's it's languishing. It's like we're going around in circles mm. when it when it has to do with these things. So we're lacking everything but real conviction to act and do anything proper, right? So it's it's another talks, another workshop. You know, they've said things. They've put out things that probably even contain within. PIGB, mm. right? Um, that still is yet to be action. But yes, focusing on the statements, it is with merit. It's a, it's a, it's almost, uh, it's, it's a bit contra. Um, there's, a, there's, a, there's a slight overlap of uh, conflict of interest. If yeah. you're the licensee and then you're supposed to also um, be the environmental watchdog, mm -hmm. you know, it, it doesn't. Um, I, I can immediately see why this it doesn't fit in with best practice, and also it, it, it probably even adds to the bureaucracy in that the, the, the scope of focus is too wide. Yes. So you can add to bureaucracy. I mean, statements from them say that I mean, it's you know, uh, they did extensive interviews, um, and DP, DPR. It's, it's almost impossible to work with. It's impossible to get information out of them. Mm. It's impossible to get work done with them, mm. and it's impossible to even get the envi um, the environmental assessment part of what it is that they're supposed to do mm. out of them. So yeah. It, it, Again. It's, a, it's an issue, yeah. a major issue there. Premium Times uh, newspaper has our next story, and I'll come to you, Chata, with this one. Remains of many police officers killed by Zampara bandits yet to be retrieved. And as a statement from the force, uh, police force headquarters, they declined to provide details of the uh, killing of many Nigerian police officers in Zampara State as of the 29th of, October, of November. It said no fewer than 50 police officers were part of a, 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 a police anti-rustling team that was deployed to the troubled states. They were killed and they were ambushed and killed by armed bandits, uh, according to multiple police sources. But a source that, you know, sought anonymity said 
that these bodies are lying there, their corpses are decomposing, but the police are not able, even the military are not able to get into those zones because uh, they fear that an impending ambush, you know, waits. And this is really sad, Chata. To address the dead first. Amen. Now, um, considering that this ambush happened exactly il uh, 11 days after the Metele attack, um, yes. attack mm. it's instructive that clearly our security services have not learned anything. Three days after the killings, after the killings of some policemen, we don't know how many were killed, and police HQ are ignoring desperate families who are asking about the fates of their loved ones. And then they think that over time, with more of this kind of action, more policemen will be willing to go. At some point, I mean, now remember that last week, two national deities, this day and punch, actually had stories that imply that the security brass are afraid of the possibility of mutiny mm. within, the, within the security services. Mm. It's because of things like this. When the rank and file are losing faith in the ability or in uh, or sincerity of their officers mm. in protecting or taking care of them. These mm. things don't happen in isolation and they don't happen at once. Mm. It's a chain of events that leads to them. Mm. And that is the path we are on mm. if we are not careful. The brass, the officers at the head of the armed forces, the officers at the head of the police have to show genuine concern for the lives and welfare of their men. They are not showing that. Do you think this might be um, one of their suspicions or rather fear and which informed their decision to immediately uh, in review the salary structure of the police officers? The and salary just recently, structure thing is an election gimmick. And, then, and then just recently remote. promoting over 220 uh, an, police it's, officers it's an election the gimmick. That's why it's a different. It's a completely different matter. Okay. It's an election gimmick. Mm. And it's it's not a, it's it was it's it's actually if you want to go into that that's illegal because okay. it's supposed to be this police service commission to do it first. Yeah. Okay. That's now having said all of that about the police, mm. we must begin to seriously worry about northern Nigeria. Mm. Northern Nigeria is seventy nine percent of our country's land area. It is full of ungoverned spaces. There's a new movement that has emerged in Sokoto that is collecting zakats from rural villages mm, zakat by being, force. Zakats being what? Tributes. Okay. By force. And there's another issue there is that there's a large number of uneducated people in that region who still believe in the concept of the Madi. Mm. And as a result, are vulnerable to demagoguery. All of these in vast ungoverned spaces. If we don't find a solution to this, we will reap the whirlwind. All right. Thank you very much, Cheta. And so, Guardian newspaper next for this next story. Today, the Vikamikan Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, yesterday claimed to have traced 500 million naira in properties uh, that links to the Plachu State Governor, Jonah Jang. They said uh, they've connected the dots and they said the properties are located at number eight and nine, uh, Gobaru Road, or uh, in JRA Kadna State. Really, what are your thoughts connected on this? Connected dots there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> connected dots. I mean, I'm sorry, I can't avoid this. The headline from the Guardian is. Uh, is interesting because they say EFCC allegedly traces. Is that EFCC has traced or not traced? No, because all yeah, people it's, said, it's, oh, it's, 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 it's whether or not whether know. the allegations mm. are true. That's the, the alleged to, part. Right. Yeah. So, um, when, when will this cycle ever end? Or this cycle, it, it won't. You know, um, past governors, assistant governors, um, uh, being. Um, accused of impropriety mm. um, um, and mismanaging government funds. And when you tie that into the instability in that entire region, when you think about um, the Middle Belt, Plato, Benue, mm -hmm. uh, and, and you see the huge sums that were extracted or sucked out, it's any surprise that those regions are um, unstable because, you know, little to no, it's like a lifeblood of those um, of those uh, states where, where have, have been, have been uh, sucked out. Yes. Now, Look, it, it's very short on this because the story is in two parts. It's one on, oh, they've traced this. It needs to be proved. If it's accurate, mm -hmm. yeah, he's in the Senate, so um, immunity, he's not covered by immunity. He's, he's supposedly he's, he's, um, um, he's still standing, standing trial, trial yes. in, in, in Plata. So, you know, that should, that should play out, you know, and justice should be served mm -hmm. if these allegations can be substantiated. But if he owns any of these properties, 
um, from an, uh, from his time in the military um, and time as governor, yes. he wouldn't have been able to you know afford any of them. So it should it should be an open and, and, and shut case. Let's hope that they do bring uh, justice. All right, so now our final story from Vanguard newspaper. I'll come to you, Balang, with this one. ERGP 4.73 billion dollar investments identified in a Greek transport focus lab. So the federal government through the uh, Ministry of Budget and Planning has disclosed that uh, through that program, the ERGP, the Economic and Recovery Growth Plan, uh, they've identified uh, you know provisions that would provide jobs for over 129,000 people. What are your thoughts on this? Well, this is this is the this is the economic and recovery growth plan that we have been that was implemented over a year and a half ago. And uh, you know, what, a year and a half ago, we are still talking potential at the moment as well. Too, this is very typical of our government. Anyway, uh, we are only just a few months away from election as well. So I wonder how much is going to go on when we're in the when we're conducting the elections and beyond that as well. Too. It's so, so anyway, cynical. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> because what can that's I say? the reason why they were created in the first place. Exactly, so and areas they can you know provide jobs. Absolutely, and you know when we look at this ERGP as well, too, this was supposed to be our economic driver as well. Too. We, it was supposed to take us out of our recession and push us forward into growth as well too. But a year and a half later, we're still here. So, and, and, and so we're talking about potential. We've been talking about potential for so long. This $4.7 billion is not the only amount that has been mentioned in here. You know, I'll go through what the what the Minister of Budget and Planning seconds. talked about as well. So he talked about $4.7 billion going as investment into agriculture and transport. He's talking about another... Um, um, so so amount of money, 9.2 billion as well, to going into other sectors of the economy. So we are talking about 33 billion dollars that we are talking about here. Mm -hmm. And so what I just wanted to point out is that potential does not put food on the table. Uh -huh. I mean, a lot of Nigerians are unemployed. There's a lot of poverty going on as well, and they need to act quick they need to on this. Thank you very much for that. Well, we'll round up uh, with uh, this quick message. Well, it's not a quick message. I think I'm going to summarize your messages. Uh, he basically says, so the approved $1 billion is yet to be released. Is that the reason why all these attacks have happened? Um, have we taken a delivery of those to Kano Jets? We paid for? Uh, because the way some people were defending the purchase, it was as though the moment the Jets landed the madness to be over the jets haven't really um, been uh, taken over yet if mm -hmm. you were following the story you'd understand that this is going to happen over a period of several years so yes. there you go Lagos thank you very much and a big thank you to our analysts at Chickster is Cheta Waze at Mr. G Quest is Bolaha and of course you can find Tanukufi as Big Kufs as well keep listening Lagos because coming up next at 8.15 we'll be talking sports inside the locker room with Tega and uh, I wanted to ask did she travel while I was away because no, I, 